Hi, it's Miss Ella again from All Saints. Well, here we are again. We're back in the nursery again. And I have some special stories to tell you because as children, I want you to realize just how important you are to all of us. Now let's start by remembering what we've just come through. We celebrated a wonderful, wonderful season. You remember what that was? It was Christmas. Now that we've passed Christmas, we want to look at our calendar to see where we've come now. We started out with our Christmas emblem here, but today I think is now four Sundays since Christmas. So we want to move our arrow, one, two, three, take it from the three, and we're going to move it to four. So here we are in our church calendar year, getting ready to move on around. We're starting all over again, okay? Today, we're going to do a story about three different children. Our first child, though, is going to be a little girl. Her name is Agnes. And Agnes lived back in the 4th century in Rome. Well, there was a lot of stuff going on in Rome back then in the 4th century. There were children being persecuted. There were Christians being persecuted. But the children were the innocent ones. And it was such a shame to see little ones with such faith and so important to all of our lives that they were being persecuted and killed. Well, this story is about a girl named Agnes. And our feast day for Agnes is January the 21st, which we just passed. She is called the saint for little girls. And the reason is, is because she was such a sweet child. She was like 14 years old when her beauty captured the attention of one of the Roman high officials. And he was so mesmerized or so captured by her beauty that he wanted to marry her. Well, Agnes said no. She didn't want to marry anyone because her faith said that she was going to be the one and only love that she had in her heart, which was Jesus. Well, that official did not like that. He was told no. Well, he decided he would teach her a lesson. He had her taken as a prisoner. And as a Christian, it was illegal to be a Christian back then, but he had her taken to a place where she could be kind of humiliated and thought she changed her mind, but she didn't. She still wanted to be the bride of Jesus. She always said there is one God in heaven and earth and the Christian that I have in me says that I'm devoted to that one God. So what he did is he had some men go in to kill her. Well, Agnes had angels that watched over her and when they came in to kill her, it struck them down and killed them. Agnes, out of the goodness of her heart and the love in her heart and the faith in her heart, she had the Spirit of God with her, and she brought them back to life. Well, that was something that no one had seen before. A child, a 14-year-old girl. So they had her tortured, and they had her burned alive. So she was killed for being a witch. She was not a witch. She was a very, very sweet lady who through her prayers helped a man come back to life for something that he didn't know what he was doing now when we think of purity we think of the lamb of god she's also recognized by being a lamb of god because of the pureness that we remember from jesus being the lamb of god she has a famous voice that says i love you my bridegroom and in seeking you i endure suffering in baptism, I was crucified so that I might reign in you. And I died so that I may live with you. Accept me as a pure sacrifice, for I have offered myself in love. That is such a wonderful little girl. So we can remember her, and all girls should be very proud to know that there is a young girl who made a sacrifice at 14 to be the bride of Jesus. Now, the next story I want to talk to you about 
is a story of three children. This happened over in Portugal. Now you remember our map. It's in that same area where Rome and Italy and all those places are. Well, this is a story of a little girl named Lucia, her cousins who are Francisco and Jacinta. Now Jacinta and Francisco were brother and sister. They were eight and nine years old. Can you imagine? And their cousin Lucia was a little older. She was like 14. Well, one day, the three of them were always out tending to the sheep and the herd and doing work around the farm to help their moms and dads. They saw something in an area where a cave was and they wandered over to that area and there was this apparition. You know what an apparition is? It's like a vision. And that apparition was of a beautiful lady just standing there and talking to them. Now the lady told them certain things and they were important things. And they rushed back home and they tried to tell their parents and other people in the village, no one believed them because they were children. Well, the lady told them to come back and they did. They went back and for some reason, Francisco was the only one who could not hear her. He could see, he knew she was there. His faith was strong, but only Lucia and Jacinta could actually hear what the lady was saying. I have pictures of the holy lady, and there is pictures of this place in Portugal called Fatima. People still go there from all over the world to celebrate the Feast of Fatima, because there were lots of healings and things that came from that area. Well, Francisco and Jacinta, as young as they were, became ill. And Lucia would pray to the mother and ask her what was going to happen to him. And they were told that the two children would be in heaven with her. She asked them as one of the things that they were supposed to do every day is to teach the world to heal itself, to love one another. And she gave them visions and she asked him to repeat the rosary. Have you ever seen a rosary before? This is a rosary. And a lot of people in different faiths still believe in reciting the rosary. But that's what the apparition told the girls to do. She told them to recite that rosary for three times every day. She also told them some secrets that would happen in the world. Those secrets had to do with the wars that were coming. These wars had not happened yet. World War I, World War II, and the 20th century persecution of Christians. Now, there was a third secret that they told just to Lucia. And Lucia wrote it down and put it in a special diary and gave it to the Pope. It was to be revealed only to the Pope. So we don't know what that third secret is. Lucia went on to live in a nunnery. She was a young girl who grew to be 90 something years old and she died later. But the bishop recognized the value and the special importance that these children had to the world and to other little children all over to show how great y'all, you all have a voice and you all can be heard and how great that voice affects every one of us. You are so important. God has granted us such a important message with you. When you think of those children, think of how important you are. Now, you may not be 8 or 9 or 14 yet, but as you grow older, remember some of the saints that we've talked about were young like you. Thank you for being with me today, and I will see you next time with another saint story. This is Miss Ella. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.